Grant is a JavaScript developer at Third and Grove. And at Third and Grove, he's very passionate, passionate about uh, modern technologies and using cutting edge uh, technologies for projects for clients. Um, Grant is also a new dad. And I asked him, yeah, I asked him what his special talent was. And he said it is being a great navigator. And then I asked his friend about that. And his friend said he's a very bad navigator. So if you want to take a risk, you can get in a car with him and have him navigate you somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, okay. I rarely get lost. <laughs> so um, join me in welcoming Grant. Hello. Um, I'm Grant Glidewell. I guess saying that is kind of superfluous now. Um, we're going to talk about making Gatsby fast. And now we've just heard some talks about how fast Gatsby is, uh, kind of out of the box. Uh, the question may come to mind, like, is Gatsby fast? Um, well, yeah, Gatsby's like really fast. I actually didn't know that uh, like the little fireworks happened until I built a Gatsby site and I saw this and I like lost my mind for just a minute. It's crazy. How many of you guys have seen this? Is this new to anybody? Am I like enlightening? Yes, this happens when you do good things. Okay, so clearly like Gatsby's fast. So why would I even talk about this? So I've been doing some research into uh, Gatsby sites across the internet. Um, and what I found is there are a lot of like really fast Gatsby sites. There are people who are implementing things in like really uh, performant ways, uh, but not all Gatsby sites are equal like not by a long shot. Uh, and there are some very specific things that like everybody who has a fast Gatsby site does these things. And this isn't like a clickbaity title, like these 10 things will blow your mind and make your Gatsby site fast. But like these 10 things will blow your mind and make your Gatsby site fast. Uh, <laughs> there's not even close to 10, I have 15 minutes. So like, let's kind of get to it. Uh, so like th the slogan, blazing fast, this is not, just hype. They really do hand you performance out of the box. Gatsby does this great job of making writing performant code easy. Uh, it does like really hard things uh, like static rendering and it does route based code splitting. Uh, it will do uh, like image pre processing, link prefetching. Like it does this stuff that if you tried to build this into your React application, you would be bolder than me. <sighs> so, this is like a huge part of why React has been so successful. Uh, so like making a React app performant is no small feat. So hats off to them. So Gatsby's fast, uh, but then you guys happened. Uh, so there's, there's like a ton of concerns that go into making a good, like successful website or web app. Many of these are outside of the purview of a developer. How many of you are developers? I'm a developer. How many of you are just not developers? We're two groups. There's like three hands, okay. Um, so some of them are outside of the purview of a developer, some are like well within it. Um, some teams are better at handling um, issues when performance takes a hit uh, than others. Um, so some teams do a great job of this, others not so much. Uh, what I hope you get out of this talk is just an idea of some things and considerations to take while you're building a Gatsby site. Um, so we're going to start out with easy wins. Uh, so you might be surprised the number of sites that don't leverage the most basic tooling that Gatsby offers. Uh, Gatsby Image, uh, which if you haven't heard about it, uh, there's great documentation on it. It does uh, image pre-processing at build time and then leverages source set to uh, basically bring the correct image size in uh, based on where this is loading in. Um, and then the link component, which is from Reach Router, so it's not like bespoke to Gatsby, uh, but they've, they've made it a part of their tooling, and its magic trick is doing what's called link prefetching, which like loads when the user hovers over the link, which is why when a Gatsby site does load, you click something, it happens instantly. We'll, we'll see examples of that uh, in a minute. Now, you may be thinking, like, this is just obvious stuff. And so much like, uh, React performance 
articles of old that would talk about like use production builds, like that was their first tip. Who remembers those articles? Those existed because there were people like across the internet shipping developer builds of React. And what I'm seeing now is the same level of um, user error, like shipping uh, a developer build of React. So uh, th this is not just being alarmist. This is not obvious to everybody, so please bear with me. So the, the first, uh, first thing we'll talk about is Gatsby image. It does rad things. Uh, so as you can see, there's lots of options. You're gonna see this like cool animated GIF. Uh, this is like, uh, I don't remember the URL for this, but it's like the intro to their documentation for Gatsby image, it's really cool. Um, so it does all of these cool things, but there's some reasons that people don't use it. Uh, one of those reasons is that GraphQL is kind of hard. So people coming into Gatsby, who came, in, who came into Gatsby and that was your first introduction to React or like a big JavaScript project? There's some hands that are like low, they're like, I don't really wanna say that it's me. Okay, so I think this is increasingly the case and with the path forward that was laid out in the talks before me, I think it's going to continue to be the case. And so like the learning curve of React and JavaScript projects in general is tough. And then throwing GraphQL on top of that is difficult. Now, Gatsby's done a great job of handing you tooling that makes these queries much easier to write. And so you can see that uh, fragment here. Um, there's a lot to that. I've rewritten these uh, without the fragment and it takes some doing. So th the fragment is there for a reason. Uh, the documentation around this is very good. Uh, so that excuse is no longer valid. Uh, the other excuse is, is that it's hard to style, and this is absolutely valid uh, until I make my next point. So they've given you uh, an API in the component now where you can style the wrapper and the image itself. So the hooks are in there for you to use. Well, okay, hooks is now a confusing term because React hooks. Uh, the props are in there for you to style uh, as you will. It is more difficult uh, than just styling an image straight out, uh, but it's well worth the effort. Um, th this, is, this is something where they have tackled some hard problems and it's, and it's a consequence and a byproduct of that. Um, but the consequence of not using Gatsby image is pretty severe. Um, the next issue is, I literally can't read it on the screen. Build times, okay. Um, I'm, I'm gonna read through this, we'll get to the part that you guys know is coming now. Uh, so this was a really hard one, especially at 3rd and Grove. Uh, we have a very image heavy site. We process something like 5,500 images generated from uh, our, our whole site. Um, and pushing build times up and up and up is something that doesn't just punish developers, it punishes content editors. So uh, th this was a real problem for us. Um, and, and so, well, it just isn't now. Uh, something awesome happened, and Dustin was just talking about it, and that's the Gatsby build service. Um, this is real, and so as I was writing this presentation, um, that very week, I, I got pinged saying, hey, we're gonna release builds. I had kind of seen it a little bit here and there. Uh, I did some testing, and these were the results. So on Netlify and any other like CI service uh, that just does uh, a, a straight Gatsby build, we're looking at 25 to 40 minutes depending on the state of the cache. <laughs> in, in, in Gatsby, it's like eight minutes max with no cache in place and one minute less than a minute, as you guys have seen, uh, with a cache in place. It's wild, it's so fast. Uh, so no longer an excuse uh, that build times are gonna balloon. Uh, they have solved that problem. Uh, the next uh, thing that you really should be using if you're using uh, Gatsby is the link component. It, it seems really simple, but the benefits are enormous. Um, it's a drop-in replacement, um, and the consequences of not using it can be very, like, very severe. <laughs> I want to show you. Uh, so this is this is our website. Clicking around, uh, it makes sense. We have like this full-screen menu. You click the menu, it opens. You click where you want to go, it loads immediately. This is the behavior that we expect from a Gatsby site. Um, now, I went through and I did an evil thing, and I replaced all of the link components with regular uh, anchor tags or link tags or whatever you want to call them. Uh, it's broken. Our site does not work correctly when it's 
requesting a new page. This is not the way that Gatsby was designed to work, and it breaks not just our site, but any site that's using Gatsby. It's probably a little more obvious because of the animations that we use, uh, but this is something that hurts your performance in a way that is noticeable to all of your users. The answer is simple, do this, and don't do that. Okay, um, you guys want something probably mm, a little bit less obvious, loading, loading, lazy loading. Okay, that whole like series of slides was a joke, nobody laughed, I feel personally offended now. <laughs> Thank you, all right, I feel much better. Uh, so the concept of lazy loading is simple. Who has implemented lazy loading? Okay, uh, th this is the way that I've implemented lazy loading in Gatsby. There, there are multiple ways to do it. There are libraries to help you with this, but this is a pretty simple, straightforward way to do it. There are links to code in this, um, so if you, if you wanna go to those, uh, they are available uh, in our open source repo for the Third and Grove website. Um, essentially, you don't load what the user doesn't see. So everything below the fold, uh, we just have like a big blank component. So how do we do this? Uh, with a little help from Intersection Observer. So Intersection Observer is a browser API that lets you know what is and is not in the viewport at any given time. It's super neat. All right, let's look at some code. Some code. So in this code, uh, we are creating a ref uh, and we are feeding that ref to our custom hook that uh, leverages intersection observer called use has been visible. This returns us just a Boolean, right? So I use that Boolean to conditionally render uh, what is returned from this component. And so some of this always renders, so user sees this, this always renders. And then we have this uh, ternary. Uh, how, how many of you hate this just because there's a ternary in there? I think they're beautiful and wonderful and uh, fight me. I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, so as soon as the user has scrolled to where this ref is referenced and the intersection observer says, hey, it's in the viewport, instantly we load the rest of the page, right? This is how it works. This is a little bit of our uh, like internals of how the intersection observer hook works. Um, so it has its own internal state. Uh, we instantiate uh, with our use effect, uh, this vo.watch here. It takes the node reference that we hand it, um, and then it, it does its own kind of internal magic that's set up elsewhere in the file. If you really wanna dig into it, uh, little.rip slash io hook uh, will feed you like the full, I think this is like 350 lines long, because um, it, it does take some doing to set up uh, the intersection uh, observer instance. Um, so, basically what we have is that this is how we're returning our Boolean, and it just flips. Uh, so we're able to like safely, within React, access something that is from the DOM, which as you know in React land, you do not directly touch the DOM ever, right? Right? Okay. Let's see it in action. So this is how it works. Our initial page loads and if I let the GIF reset, you see these, these requests kind of fire off, and then you get to a certain section of the page, and all these other requests fire off for, uh, I believe, some of these SVGs and some of the other images further down. And so what this does is it reduces the number of requests, it reduces the number of DOM nodes, and actually, in Gatsby, you're not rendering as much static content. And so there's benefits that are layered depending on how your site is set up and how your page is set up. Um, so this is something where using some tools that are available in every browser, just intersection observer, React hooks, some conditional rendering, you can get this extra performance. So there are some other things that you want to consider that I haven't covered. Uh, I will be releasing a series of, uh, the number's like 12 articles. I think I'm gonna probably pare it down to like a more sane number. Um, but I'm going to be releasing lots of content about performance. Uh, some of that will cover fonts. Um, fonts are something that we tackled in the Third and Grove build. If you go to our website and look at the number of fonts that you are loading, it is 18. <laughs> Gasp is the correct response. Uh, bundle size is another thing that you really wanna be concerned about. We're talking about a plugin ecosystem. This can really make bundles super big. 
Um, and so you want to be cautious about that. You want to make sure that uh, you, you're not loading a bunch of code that you don't need. And that on top of third-party code, which is something that I've had discussions with other developers in the room about, third-party code gets wild, like pixels and all these things that are very slow to execute. Um, and so there's, there's a lot to this. And so it's not something I can cover in 15 minutes. Uh, but I do appreciate you listening to me so far. Uh, I'd normally open this up for questions, but I don't know if that's part of the format. Can I do that? Questions. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, so. She asked, how do you deal with animations and making those performant? Uh, that is a job for somebody much smarter than me. Uh, so we used React Spring as an animation library in our front end. I did not find it particularly performant, um, but I also don't know enough to make it better. And so I, I, uh, I would recommend, uh, if you really need specific animations, like that's, that's gonna be your go-to. But CSS animations, as far as I understand it, are pretty performant because CSS. Right, yeah, that, that, that would be a good way to go. Any other questions? Yes. Just on that, you know, um, using that method that you're using to like load the lazy load state, mm -hmm. do you know how that affects the CO? Like how do you index or like index? Or? So the question was, how does lazy loading affect SEO? And so because of the way that our site is set up where our uh, our layout component always renders the, uh, the header component, which is where we use, we set up all of our SEO outside of the actual content. Um, most of it, I think, would remain intact, but I am not an SEO expert, and so that is for somebody who is smarter than me in that particular area. Um, that's a great question, and that's a great consideration. Um, I, I think it's probably mostly intact, because our Lighthouse score is still 400. <laughs> Cool transition animations. I'm sorry. Up, up front, you were you were asking something. Uh, I was asking, what do you think about prepack and its role that it might play? What do I think about prepack? So it's the idea of at compile time statically um, figuring out the output of certain functions based on parameters that you're using, and instead of running them at runtime, it runs them at compile time and returns the evaluation. So I'm not fully able to process everything that you're saying right now. So he's. <laughs> He's like, I've got a lot of adrenaline going. I'm like up on stage talking in front of people and he's asking me very like technical questions. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about prepack or, or so what you're asking. Like, let's say you have like a, an arbitrarily complex uh, function that runs a calculation that takes you know, hundreds of milliseconds maybe, uh, but you only run it a few times. Uh, so kind of memoizing that? This sounds very neat. Um, oh. Well, if Dan's involved, it's gotta be good, right? Okay. So Dan Abramoff's doing something cool that's gonna make everything better. We appreciate it. Yes. Really bad, right? Um, so there is an article on the Third and Grove website that addresses quite a bit of that. It has to do with uh, how the fonts are defined in CSS. There, there's like a number of steps to go through to do this. Um, and I got it down to something that feels reasonable to me. So if you go to the Third and Grove website, I don't think that Flash font style content is that bad on our site. Um, it, it will exist uh, because statically rendered stuff like those, the, uh, it's like preload the font or something like that. So there's content on the Third and Grove website that maybe 
I can help you find later. Okay. Cool. Anything else? No? I'm going to be pushed off stage. Okay. Great. Thank you, Grant. <laughs>